Welcome everybody to our 12th Annual Spring Arts Festival. My name is Sal and this is Stephanie. We are very happy to have all our family and friends with us this evening to watch the performance of the true story, The Three Little Pigs, and also to see some of the artwork we have completed throughout the year. Stephanie has some thank yous to offer. Thank you to the very Reverend Father James Barquette, priest of Holy Resurrection Orthodox Church and his parishioners for sharing their church with us. We would also like to thank all the parents who participated in fundraising events for, throughout the school year and providing refreshments for this evening. And a big thank you to all the students and teachers for their hard work and devotion to education. Yes, and one more thing, we will give time at the end of the play to take a group picture. Now, without further ado, please welcome the students of Holy Trinity Academy and Preschool with their performance of the true story, The Three Little Pigs. And we hope you like it. <laughs> calls during the trial. Thank you. I see we have our 12 jurors. Thank you for your community service. Welcome back to our representing lawyers for both the plaintiffs and the defendant in the case Straw, Sticks, and Bricks. Three Little Pigs versus One Big Bad Wolf. Objection! <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Pocket Digger. I am no Judge Judy, but I will not be interrupted in my courtroom. This is no way to begin our day, sir. My apologies, Judge, but we do not know that the wolf is big and bad as announced to our fine guest. He is certainly muscular in a healthy way, but bad has yet to be proven. And while I have the court's attention, I must add that these adult pigs aren't little either. I don't mean to hoard fun, but the truth is the truth. Say, he just say, hoard fun, hoard fun, let it get started for his defense. <laughs> that may have been a Freudian slip, but point taken anyway. <laughs> Clerk Telly Sue, please revise the court documents to say pig versus wolf. Everybody happy? Yes, Judge, I will utter the transcript the transcript immediately. Please continue, Mr. Pocket Digger. I call to the stand Mr. Alexander T. Wolf. <laughs> Good day, sir. What is your perspective on these three unfortunate events? Everybody knows the story of the, of the three little pigs, or at least they think they do. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows the real story, because nobody's ever heard my side of the story. I'm the wolf, Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me Al. Okay, okay, Alexander T. Wolf. <laughs> let me remind the judge and these fine jurors on the dang question, you are very, very sick. Yes, I battle sickness often. Freeze. No one now, no, no, no one knows just how this whole Big Bad Wolf thing all got started. But it's all wrong. Maybe it's because wolves eat cute little animals like bunny, sheep, and pigs? That's just the way they are. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think people were big and bad, too. But the whole Big Bad thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. So let's continue with the trial. Way back in once upon a time time, our friend, the soft, cozy, cuddly wolf, was making a birthday cake for his dear granny. He had a terrible sneezing cold. The truth is, he ran out of sugar earlier that day. So just as you arrived, he walked down the street to ask his neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now this neighbor was a pig. 
His wisdom had yet come to mature, leaving him somewhat helpless in good decision making. He had built his whole house out of straw. Yes, straw, good old fashioned straw. I would like to bring to your attention a reenactment of the pig in question. Please enter as Exhibit A. Part two. <laughs> something tickles your nose. Mrs. Wolf, you must restrain yourself and have a seat. Mr. Pocket Digger, you need to restrain your client's family. Mrs. Wolf, if you attempt to speak to your son during this trial, I will have to have you either guarded or removed from this courtroom. Do you understand? Yes, I do understand, but that's my sweet gentle baby who loves to eat vegetables. <laughs> yes, he mainly eats veggies. Carrots, potatoes, squash. Oh, objection, Miss Wolf. It is inferring that the wolf or rather a vegetable did the three helpless little thing in question memory internal. Please continue, Mr. Big Trainer. <coughs> Though it may be hard to believe that our big build his house of straw, sometimes a big has to do what a big has to do. It's really not that unusual. <laughs> May we proceed? I thought I heard somebody's stomach growling, and well, I'm just saying we should probably hurry up this trial. Thank you, Judge. As I was saying, on the day in question, the wolf had a cold. Even with the cold, he couldn't help his, help his own selflessness to bake his grandmother a birthday cake. Eating a cup of sugar, he went to the first large pig's house. Objection! The pigs were concerned average size, largest in opinion. Please restrain from saying large. Let's continue. A hammer was lying on the sidewalk, which made my client trip over the first step and stumble into the pig's door. It fell down. Now Mr. Wolf was dazed and confused. He didn't want to just walk into someone else's house unannounced. Please look this way. Please enter as Exhibit B, reenactment of Wolf versus Pig with Straw House. So the wolf called, Little pig, little pig, are you in? There was no answer. Is it true that you're just about to go home without that cup of sugar for your dear old granny's birthday cake? Yes, I didn't want any trouble. That's when his nose started. <laughs> he felt a sneeze coming on. Well, he huffed and he snuffed and he sneezed a great sneeze. Part two. <laughs> He was 
was a little bit smarter, but not much. That Buddha's house of sticks. Yes, we all know what the sticks do in the wind. Anyway, he rang the bell and picked the house. Nobody answered. So the wolf once again called. Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? He yelled back. Tegan. Go away. Look. Say, <laughs> come in. I'm sitting right here. Chin, chin, chin. I grabbed the doorknob and all of a sudden I felt another sneeze coming on. Yeah. Oh, he huffed and he snuffed. And he and tried to cover his mouth, yelled. but he sneezed a great sneeze. Hot choo! And you're not going to believe it, but this guy's house piled down just like his brother's. And when the dust cleared, the second little pig, dead as a doornail. <laughs> it is true, he died, but how do we know it was me? He could have seen a really big spider and was scared to death. Or even worse, it could have been a flashback of the time he caught his older brother snacking on some crispy bacon. You all know pigs will eat anything. I just wanted a cup of sugar. Wolf's honor. Ah, oh, Wolfie. Mama will take care of you with some good old-fashioned crackling. I told you to go back to your seat. Ugh. Is it true that you thought the pig would spoil if you didn't eat him too? <laughs> and you did what any decent wolf would do, and you had dinner again. Yes, yes, yes. I guess we ain't giving a second helping. He must have been really full. Yeah, but the poor wolf dude did not get the cup of sugar for his dear old sweet Jenny's birthday cake. So what did you do next, Mr. Alexander T. Wolf? So I went to the next house. This guy was the first and second little pig's brother. He must have been the brains of the family. He built his house out of bricks. When the, news, when the news reporters found out 
heard about the two pigs Alexander T. Wolf had for dinner. They figured a sick guy with a bad case of the sneezes. Going to a World Cup of Sugar didn't sound very exciting. So they jazzed up the story with all that huff and puff and blow your house down stuff. And they made him the big bad wolf. The blame belongs to the twisted media. What? <laughs> That's it. So what's the real story?